destiny the soul. Welcome, Guardians. What is up, everybody? BBK Dragoon here with Destiny, the show number 40. We need to talk about House of Wolves before we get to today's regularly scheduled show. If you don't know, Destiny, the show records on Sunday. Well, Bungie, as of today, Monday, April 13th, has given us the release date of House of Wolves and a lot of information about House of Wolves that I need to share with you today before we actually get into the show. That way you guys don't go, why did Diddy and BBK not even talk about the giant news that happened this week? Well, there's not enough House of Wolves news as as of yet to do an entire show. So today's show will still stand, the one we recorded Sunday, but I will talk you through what happened and what you need to be paying attention to regarding House of Wolves. House of Wolves is coming out May 19th for all consoles. This was revealed with a cinematic trailer. It's about a minute and a half long. If you don't want to have the plot of it spoiled, just jump about a minute ahead. It's going to be on our website. It's on Bungie.net. It's all over the web. You can find it, guarantee me. The queen is upset. Why? Because her emissaries have been murdered by the fallen who used to serve her. The fallen have betrayed the queen and instead are now following a servitor. We don't know who this servitor is. Or I'm sure the lore people probably are speculating as of now. She's angry. She says that the reef is now open for guardians. They may take bounty on these betrayful fallen and that they will feel her wrath, which is cool. It's a shout out to the Queen's Wrath, the one and only PvE event that happened to Destiny during like the first, it was like the second or third week of Destiny. And I have my favorite shader from that and nobody else has it because that event has only shown up once. I bet you anything Queen's Wrath is coming back. It was just a cool little Easter egg, a great trailer. Then we found out more from Bungie as they posted an update on their website. Patch 1.1.2 is going to be deploying tomorrow, or as you listen to the show today. Okay, guys, 1.1.2 is out as of listening to the show, or it should be by the time it goes live on the server. Here's the big news. Over the next course, uh, over the course of the next month, we'll be revealing exactly what you will find in House of Wolves this May. I, I'm quoting Bungie right now. Most like our recent rounds of live update news, we plan on sharing many of the most important details with you right here on Bungie.net. Here's the big one. House of Wolves will not have a raid activity, and I quote, We didn't make this decision lightly. Our team has been humbled by the reception of raids in Destiny, and we are creating a new raid for release later this year. House of Wolves will have a new cooperative endgame activity focused on variety, replayability, and skill. A new battle arena called the Prison of Elders. Okay, here's the timeline of events that are happening that I'm going to talk about no raid in Prison of Elders. This Wednesday... They're going to be walking us through a tour of the reef with a live discussion about the upgrade paths for your gear. You do not want to miss this. We're going to be talking about it heavily next week. This is a big deal. How progression works at Endgame is a very pivotal part of House of Wolves and the hardcore community's expectations with this expansion. The following Wednesday, April 29th, they're going to reveal a live gameplay of the Trials of Osiris and its collection of Endgame gear. They gave us a screenshot. I'm going to post it with this show it's beautiful the gear looks amazing and we haven't seen these pieces before and then the following wednesday may 6th they're going to reveal a live gameplay of the prison of elders a brand new three-player cooperative multiplayer arena and the screenshot for this will also be available it's this really tricked out servitor that looks insanely powerful and you and three guardians have to face him down no raid immediate reaction is that stinks but wait, how often do you play the raid? Once a week on your character. Maybe more, but you don't really have any incentive to do so. In place of the raid is the Prison of Elders, the new activity. And they say here, a new cooperative endgame activity. And their focus is variety, replayability, and skill. I would bet you all $100 this is the Horde or Firefight mode that Diddy and I have discussed on the show many times. A wave-based survival mode that has a focus like they say on variety replayability and skill if they can make house or excuse me the prison of elders um, a good replayable activity that has incentive for people to play more than just once a week i am totally okay with there not being a raid but this is a gamble this is a big move that puts a lot of pressure on bungie to ensure that this prison of elders game mode is as good if not better than the raid to not disappoint players i would also bet that the arena raid or the reef based raid is going to be coming in comet maybe it doesn't even have to do with the the reef but 
That is what you need to know for House of Wolves right now. I want you guys to send us your feedback on Twitter about the House of Wolves reveal. Now, wait, I want it to be after the Wednesday reveal of the Reef and the discussion about the upgrade paths for your gear. If you can tweet us at Destiny to show your feedback after Wednesday, after we've found out about the new upgrade paths and seen the Reef, we are going to be talking about House of Wolves a lot over the next few weeks. But that's really all that there's come out today. Not a whole lot more to talk about. It's exciting. It's good to know it's not coming in June. I hope you all enjoy today's regularly scheduled show. It still has relevance. And we're going to be talking about lots of good stuff. So thanks, everybody. We will see you in the show. What is up, everybody? My name is BBK Dragoon, And welcome to the show. Diddy, how are you doing today? Very well. And you were talking about dry stuff. I'm from Texas. I know dry content when I see it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, man. How has it been there? Uh, you know, surprisingly wet now that I say that, you know, it's been raining a lot here, uh, but that's just because, uh, you know, everyone in the North had those snowstorms. So all the snow in the South turns to rain. So we get a lot of rain yeah. in the springtime. So that's have how it's been. Had allergy issues. Yeah. I have allergies every single year around this time. And the worst is I get random nosebleeds. Every oh. single week. It's the worst. I'll be talking to someone casually and all of a sudden blood just drips out of the nose. <laughs> There's no <laughs> warning at all. It's just sudden. I'm sorry. Hypnotoad is summoning me. <laughs> Jeez, I'm sorry. This spring's been killing me. It's been like, I haven't had allergies in a few years, but they say oh, it's man. been so dry and so hot early on. I just, bleh, it's it's terrible. Like people can probably hear it in most of the shows, but what have you been up to this week? Did you play some Destiny? I know you've been playing League. Congrats, by the way. I heard you got uh, rank up. Yep, I'm back in silver one finally. So I'm on the final grinds back into gold. Yes. So once I hit gold, I am really going to try hard to hit platinum at, by the end of the season. Because oh my gosh, that'd be sick. All last year, or two years ago, I was all bronze, f- pretty new to league, trying to get into silver, and it didn't work out. And then last year, I got into silver, and then I got into gold by the end of the season last year. This season, my goal is platinum. So I think I can do it. I definitely think you can do it, and that would be really exciting. When it happens, you let me know. So, oh, I'll probably I'll probably stream the uh, gold to platinum promotional series. Oh, very fun. cool. And but uh, in terms of destiny, yeah. I mean, I just did the nightfalls. I'll be completely honest. That's and fine. What did you get? Anything good? No, I think I got a no land beyond. Yes. Oh yeah, boy. Woo. Best primary sniper in the game. Mm-hmm. That's my third or fourth no land beyond drop, to be honest. But yeah. other than that, nothing notable. What time does Zer leave the tower on Sundays? Is it in the morning at like two a.m.? It's, yeah, so Zer is here Friday and Saturday for us. Yeah, I figured so, as much. yeah, when the clock hits 2 central U- U- U.S. time. Yeah. I think whenever the clock hits 1 o'clock a.m. Didn't buy Starfire Protocol for my Warlock this week. I did the Nightfall as well on just my Warlock character, and I got coins. And I love getting coins from the Nightfall. It's as fun as doing the uh, the weekly heroic, only you just put all that extra effort in. Yeah, so. exactly. Valis No Burn is probably my least favorite of all the Nightfall. Boring. Tracks. Until I just read a Reddit post about this. Until No Burn Dust Palace comes to Ugh. Xbox, like that's going to be the worst ever. For people who don't know Dust Palace, can you just quickly explain it? Yeah. So the very end, the boss is three scions with. Um, like omnigal level shields of void solar and arc so it's one of each different element type and then with nightfall with no burn it's just going to be the worst ever yeah we sassy and i did the nightfall this week and it was fine we cheesed phallus we went under the ramp and just shot him in the foot and then he walked that's what you're gonna have to do like either get in the chandelier or under the stairs so yeah yeah it was it's okay. I'm looking forward to the new Nightfall for this week. But all right, we did get a pretty cool weekly update this week that I want to talk about. So let's get into the news. News! All right, so the Bungie weekly update this week. We're getting closer to 112. Everybody just sort of wants 112 at this point, but we're still getting more information about it. So. PvP ammunition is really the center of the discussion this weekend. The Crucible team wants to change the way ammo crates dictate the flow of battle. To hit the big marks here, 
Designer Kevin Yanes is going to talk us through some of the choices that they made here. So he says, at the highest level, we had a few goals in mind. Make special ammo, uh, special ammo a more precious resource in Crucible. Further solidify heavy ammo's role in the Crucible. Further improve the balance of encounters by limiting high damage weapons. So basically what they're doing is special ammo will spawn less frequently, it will take longer to pick up, and there will be less crates located on the map. And the bricks that you do get are going to provide you with less ammo. So they want to see less shotguns, snipers, and they're trying to reduce the amount of secondary weapon play in the Crucible. And my knee-jerk reaction to this is meh, kind of like whatever. So what, what do you think, Diddy? If they don't remove the starting secondary ammo, it's still going to be somewhat of a problem. But the longer pickup time means you can't just run past special ammo when you're running into the next room. So that's good. And giving less ammo per pickup is also big as well. Because, you know, hopefully people won't be able to use their shotguns as primaries anymore. But That's I, that's what they're trying to sound yeah. like. They want to remove some level of shotgun play. But... I think it's it's going at the problem in sort of a unique way. Instead of actually giving shotguns a little bit more of a nerf in PvP, we're just going to reduce the amount of ammo. So you have to use it more carefully. I don't know if that's going to remove my issue because how how little shotgun ammo do you actually need? I find myself very, very rarely running out of shotgun, shotgun ammo in a PvP game, and I use that thing pretty regularly on the close quarters maps. I mean, have you had any issue with that? Do you think this will solve the problem, basically? Not completely. Yeah. It's it's a more durable band-aid than yeah. the previous 1.1.1 update. I don't so, get it because they yeah. nerf shotguns with 1.1.1. Just, in my opinion, they would just need to remove the starting secondary ammo yeah. and like have people pick it up. I think that's how it was in the beta or the alpha and like it would it made sense to me, but I guess oh well. Yeah. I think this is a hill that we probably don't need to die on. Like, I, We'll see what happens when the change is implemented, but I don't think it'll completely solve our problems. Yeah, we don't know specifics. They're holding off until the patch notes to tell us by how much and like how little you're going to get or how much you're going to get. So, Also, heavy ammo, the radius uh, for pickup is going to be increased. So basically, if you're within a certain radius of the heavy ammo, one of your teammates pulls it, you're actually going to see one of those ammo boxes drop on the ground. You can pick it up. A lot of people already know this, but they're raising that radius. Now... This is a significant change here. Kevin says, The main thing we wanted to prevent in terms of heavy ammo was players trying to buffer their supply by sitting within range of a brick without picking it up. This hurts your ability to anticipate when heavy ammo would be in play during a match. By introducing despawn conditions, we're ensuring that players will have to acquire ammo when it becomes available or risk losing it altogether. So to give context here, there's a thing called delaying your heavy ammo. One person pulls the heavy ammo box. As long as you're within the radius of it, your ammo brick will drop on the ground. You don't have to pick that up right then. As the crucible stands now, you can leave that ammo like box on the ground as long as you like, even if you die, you can come back and pick up that heavy ammo later in the match. And it's a really smart tactical play because what does everybody do after they get heavy ammo? Run to the middle of the map, rocket launch each other, and pretty much everybody dies. So if you delay your heavy ammo spawn, you've got this really nice, hey, nobody really has heavy ammo anymore. Now I've got my against all odds HMG out and I'm just going to go murder folks who are not paying attention to it. They wanted to eliminate this. I'm very conflicted uh, about the way I feel regarding heavy ammo. And Diddy, we talked in the pre-show about this. Could you, what do you feel about this? And, and we can probably talk about how we, f you know, think two heavy ammo spawns on the map isn't probably optimal. I like that they're implementing the despawn um, conditions. Option. Condition, that's what yeah. it is. That's the word. Despawn conditions. It makes sense because, you know... Heavy ammo spawns, and then three minutes goes by, somebody rockets me. I'm like, you still have heavy ammo? I don't yeah. understand that. Yeah. And it's like I have this little window of opportunity where heavy ammo is in play, and I, so I can anticipate that and play back a little bit, you know, kind of um, prepare myself for, you know, he might have rockets around that corner. Whereas, oh, it's been five minutes since heavy ammo spawned. I can just run around this corner without any worry in the world. Yeah. But then, like, both teams each get heavy ammo and that doesn't make sense to me like heavy ammo in my opinion is like an objective that should be on the map that both teams need to fight over because totally. 
having two heavy ammo spawns on the map allows it gives the losing team too much of a handicap does that make sense it does i mean the way i think about it is any halo map that's 4v4 you could have two snipers on narrows how many rockets are on narrows there's one there's like very few 4v4 halo maps that had more than one rocket it created a conflict that people fought over it's one of my least favorite parts about crucible gameplay is when heavy ammo spawns because pretty much everybody grabs their rockets they get heavy and then you just sort of have this bloodbath of people shooting each other with rockets and it usually ends up with blah, blah, both people die at the same time it's awkward and i just I hate the way it disrupts the way <laughs> gameplay feels to me. Now, some people think that's a nice heightening of gameplay, and I do agree. I kind of like that there are despawn conditions coming back. It is a little bit unfortunate when you're like, man, heavy spawn two minutes ago. I just died of that guy. How does he still have that, or did he just pick it up and delay it? That's good, but I would much prefer to have one on the map. You know, as it stands now, you don't really fight that often over heavy. If you're with a good team, like when you and me and Sassy play, let's try and deny their heavy but if it's just you and, and some randoms, it's like, all right, guys, we're going to go to our purple ammo box on our side of the map while they go to their purple ammo box mm -hmm. on their side of the map. You know, think Firebase Delphi. And then let's all meet in the middle and kill each other. And then exactly. it gets back to normal. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, it's a waste of heavy ammo. If they're trying to put an emphasis on heavy ammo as a power weapon, like objective, it's just wasting if they give both teams the same one at the same time and then just meet in the middle, like you said. Yeah. It just negates the importance of heavy ammo. Yeah, I think there's tuning and, and a lot of things to be done to sort of refine the role that heavy ammo can play in Crucible. A few more things here. Extending the inbound timer by five seconds is something that they're going to be doing with 112. They are also adding new visual prompts like timers and pre spawn effects to forecast the arrival of all ammo crates. It says all, not just heavy, but probably green ammo crates too. More advanced notice, sh uh, more advanced notice reduces how often players open the crate without their teammates having a chance to get to it. So they, they just generally want to have most people near the ammo crates that way. Some folks aren't complaining since they're reducing special ammo. You definitely want to be picking that up now, and you don't want that one teammate. Little, oh, just pulled it. You don't get any kind of a, an effect, I guess. But it seems, I don't know. Do you think that's a little holding the player's hand, Diddy? I, I don't know. Yeah. With these new animations and, you know, giving more time, sounds like Bungie really wants heavy ammo to be of larger importance in yes. crucible yeah so it's we'll see how this change affects it okay cool helmets in social spaces i'm gonna let you take this one so with the uh the next update is that right they're yep. allowing players the option of wearing your helmet inside the social space which would currently be the tower but with house of wolves sounds like they're they are in fact adding a new social space um, so in your options, your settings menu, you'll be able to either remove helmet in social spaces or wear home helmet in social spaces. And their reasoning for this is it was somewhat of a simple um, design implementation. And, you know, they want people to show off their gear that they're yeah. rocking. Yeah. And uh, we both have different opinions about this. So I'll let you start. OK, I think it's pretty cool. That's my immediate reaction. I'm like, <laughs> all right, that's nice. That's kind of a hint that maybe down the road Bungie would be okay with us having separate sets of armor for social spaces or maybe even transmog this is the first kind of hint of cosmetic based in-game ui type stuff okay i'm like yeah that's pretty cool now when i actually think about it, i'm like you know the only time i ever get to see my guardian's face and hair is in the tower and everywhere else is my helmet i don't think i'm ever going to turn that feature on like i just don't okay but we think that it exposes more than just that. So what, what's your take and what does it sort of reveal? Okay, so my first impression is why would I ever want to wear my helmet in the tower? Because yeah. I see it everywhere else in the game. It completely removes the fact, it just negates the fact that I customize my guardian to be human or woken, exo, yeah. male or female, mm -hmm. what color hair I have. And it's just like, it doesn't, it doesn't really make sense to me. And then what you said is my next thought like if we can do this like why can't i have a tower set of robes totally like like my guardian wears the armor 24 7 right it's got to need to go into the laundry you know it's got to be smelling oh yeah you know? 
Ooh. fighting all those drag and all that hive. Like the hive blood, whatever that is, that's got to smell really bad. It's a mess. So, it's a like, mess. I want to put on my social robes. Like, give me Jedi robes. Hell yeah. yeah. I want I want that in the tower. I want to wear that piece of armor. and Sunglasses. Yeah. And Hats. In my opinion, I mean, I'm no game developer, but it would seem like it would be as easy an implementation as adding a new armor set with DLC. That's mm. what it would seem like to me, you know? Yeah. But maybe there's some some design, you know, qualifications or requirements that need to be implemented before that. But anyways, so. And then you have really awesome cosmetic items that you can have in the tower. You can look at that guy who's got sweet, like, guardian sandals, and you're like, dude, you had to beat Crow to Zen in hard mode solo to get those <laughs> sandals. Oh, man. You know, that's a big part. Like, when I go to a, a WoW social space, I'm like, I know that guy is legendary because he has that kit of gear. Oh my gosh, he's got eye level nine thousand stuff. I don't know. It would anyway. it would make more sense. Like instead of beating the raid, like beating a raid gives you raid gear. That makes sense. Like doing something in the tower gives you tower robes. Like hitting crypt arc rank fifty or seventy five or a hundred gives you like a, a crypt arc robe for you to wear in the tower. Totally. So, something like that. That would be pretty cool. Hey, we played the beta. Let's get a special T-shirt for my guardian, or something like that. You know, or a sash, so or yes, a, a hood, or I don't know. Yeah, something, so, something cool. Tons of stuff. Yeah, I mean, how do how do these guardians socialize, man? They can't just always be working. We got to go to the space club sometime, I guess. Exactly. Now, the the thing it reveals though is social spaces. Oh, plural, yeah, the, plural. The social spaces. Yeah, exactly. So. They they use the plural in the update, so like we're definitely getting a reef social space. And my initial impression is there's not enough memory RAM space on last generation consoles to just have everything in the tower. Like if Bungie could, if Bungie wanted, they could just throw all the social features in the tower. But I think they're going to have to make a second space for it. And it's yeah. actually pretty cool because. This reef social space, or this new social space, I don't want to specify the reef because it could be somewhere else, it's going to be our stepping stone into the House of Wolves and future content. Yep. So exciting. It confirms something that we talked about a while back on the show, or it, it kind of confirms it, but I'm pretty much positive that will be the case. Now, you talked about this tweet before the show, and I'm super excited to hear about it. Queen of the Reef tweets about House of Wolves. What is this one? So the voice actress for the Queen of the Reef actually tweeted about House of Wolves, and her name is Kirsten Potter, and she tweeted uh, April 11th in the morning, just recorded some cool stuff with Team Bungie. House of Wolves shaping up to be pretty intense. There are dark days ahead, Guardian. Awesome! So has the NDA lifted then? That's the real question. Yeah, so... Whenever you work with a company releasing a major product, you know, you usually have to sign or verbally, legally agree to not talk about that content until that company says, okay, you can talk about it. So this gives us the impression that Bungie said, okay, you can go ahead and tweet about your involvement with House of Wolves, whether it's done or not. And so it's kind of like hyping or ramping people up to think that, you know, House of Wolves content reveal is coming up pretty soon. So I'm really excited about it. And we still think May. So, yeah, we still think May. And some people are having their reservations. Like, they're just now recording audio. Like, what is this? But uh, I'm going to read this quote directly from uh, a comment on the Reddit post. From my experience, 17 years in TV production, voiceovers are done in post-production and one of the last things to be finished before it's packaged in and out the door. So... Uh, and you work in video, you know, like audio voiceover kind of stuff is the easiest to implement. And I've seen some behind the scenes footage for a lot of animation shows and uh, movies. The voice actors will usually have the animations playing on a TV in front of them so they can kind of act out and mimic their voice to match the actors or the characters um, movements. So. It would match Bungie's workflow too. Um, yeah. Some of the Halo 3 cut scenes you can actually go back and hear the original dub. So what they would do, the animators would make a rough cut scene of it and you would have like 
some of the the higher ups at Bungie voice acting out multiple parts, so it <laughs> sounded really awful. But they're just laying down the groundwork for the animators to animate. Then you hire the high end, expensive talent, bring them in for a day, record the scenes, and get them out because you're paying a daily rate. You don't want to have to do these lengthy things. So they want to finish the cutscenes and have that done. It, it matches their workflow. I don't know. That's just what I'm saying. So yeah. So this gives us the impression that all the animations are done for yeah. like cutscenes or tower or whatever. And so it's just, yeah, Exciting. it gives us an it gives us a window of how far along Bungie is with House of Wolves content. I totally forgot to bring up too. Sassy was in this week's weekly update. His video that he put out, just a cabal losing it, got featured in the community <laughs> like honorable mention. So he's getting his exclusive emblem. He's excited. Go check it out. Member of the DTS family and show here. We love you, Sassy. Uh, also, Destiny Tracker's world record feature is looking beautiful. I can't share or talk really too much about it, but I'm getting to see some screenshots of what it looks like. So cool. If you haven't gone to destinytracker.com, check it out. Stats, leaderboards, all sorts of cool stuff there for you. Uh, they have a Crucible Top 5 Play series, so save your clips, submit them there. Bungie usually retweets the series. It's worthwhile if you want to get your name out there and show the world your beautiful plays. Let's hop into today's topic. Salvaged relic data is now decrypted. Out of consequence. Evening, Guardian. Earn your honor, Guardian. Survey data requested by Vanguard. I want to talk about PvE content. I feel like we've talked a lot about PvP the last few weeks, mainly because what do you do in Destiny nowadays that's PvE? And Destiny just does seem to be in a content drought right now. If you look at many of the comments on like Planet Destiny videos or even other community members' videos, it's a lot of stuff where it's like... <laughs> smells like content drought to me <laughs> like we get it there's not a whole lot to do for pve players and i think destiny kind of skirts around the criticism of when people compare it to mmos by saying well destiny isn't an mmo can we be real for a second and just say it borrows a lot of elements from mmos a rating lot. in particular yeah. okay i know it's not an mmo but you cannot argue that there is a wealth of things to do for pve players at this point me and diddy we do the nightfall. That's about it. I run the raid for Vito, for my friends, for people who haven't done it yet. But for me, I don't care. I don't want to collect shards. I don't need, like, there needs to be a step up in PvE content and not a little step. Not we're getting one more raid in House of Wolves. For Destiny to succeed in the long run, we need to have five or six, like, raids that you can complete at any time and have a reason to do it fault of glass is obsolete at this point and crota's end has become something that's almost a it's a bit silly wouldn't you say diddy like the amount of cheese and how quickly <laughs> we go through that thing yeah. and the rewards nobody needs it you know probably after the first three weeks nobody needed any more rewards from the raid now the rest are nice to get the weapons and maybe better stat rolls on some armor but for the most part would you say that PvE content could see big improvements? Does it need to see big improvements? What would you do? Yeah, it could use a facelift for sure. And when you say, you know, Destiny's five or six raids, I understand it'll get to that point, but with a very long uh, break between um, expansions or DLC packages, whatever yeah. they're called, yeah. like there's got to be some type of update to like the last expansion pve content so like vault of glass and crota's end moving forward they're eventually just going to become obsolete like no one's going to run want to run them anymore because the weapons and armor from that are not going to be good enough for you know house of wolves comet yeah. DLC, destiny 2 pve content because they're just going to be too weak right totally so moving forward with each dlc i'd like to see max level raid like max level cap rates, you know, Vault of Glass level 32, Corda's End level 32. We already have that. That's level 33. That's the hard mode. But with House of Wolves, if they up the light level to 34, 36, there's going to need to be a heroic level for the raids. And there's actually, there's been a ton of threads on Reddit lately about, you know, Vault of Glass gear becoming way too obsolete because uh, the attack damage is only 300 and aside from nightfall burns you really don't need the fate bringer anymore because even though it's got outlaw and firefly it's probably the best pve hand can hand cannon in the game at this point but you know 
what's the next, what's going to replace that? You know, like, yep. when am I going to put down Fatebringer for this other DLC gun? Like, you know, it's going to, it's eventually going to happen if there's no update happening. There's got to be incentive to keep players wanting to play PVE content more than just once a week, more than just the nightfall. And there's, it's missing that. I honestly think Vault of Glass is more fun than Crota's End because, well, Vault of Glass, you play more. In Crota's End at this point, we cheese our way all the way until that witch fight. Yeah, and then we usually, fight Crota. It's usually like one or two people doing the first two parts of yep. Crota's End. Like the Abyss, if you're a hunter with Blade Dancer, you're just going to run through it and wait for your, and just beat it for your team. With yep. the Bridge, you have one person go across, everyone despawn the enemies on your side, and then just snipe them from afar. And it's just, it takes away from, you know, High end end game PVE content for most players. Yeah, and we don't, there's no reason to go back and do Vault of Glass. There is like no reason. So how do you solve it? Well, you make the armor and the weapons upgrade to the current tier armor stats, basically. And I don't see that being a huge issue. Okay, does it totally take away like I want to have the most current stuff? No, you'll still probably want to do that because there's not a ton of other things to do. It's it's A or B at the end of <laughs> Destiny PVE kind of end game stuff. With WoW, there's a lot of different raids that you get to play through, many of them. And they don't all come out at launch, but you at least get to do different wings of a raid at launch, more than what we have now. And, you know, I say I want five or six. I'm talking five or six in Destiny 1. By the time we get to Destiny 2, I want to, there needs to be a significant step forward, not a gradual step forward. I know they're working on the development of Destiny 2 right now. We know that they've got a lot of effort put towards Comet and these expansions. But my hope, my hope is that they really are taking the time needed with House of Wolves to make it a step above Dark Below in terms of PvE content. Because if House of Wolves releases and we have a similar outcome that Dark Below gave us where you had about a month and a half to two months where people were getting on regularly and there was... A, an okay amount of stuff to do and then this massive content drought like we have not had new things to do for a long time if that happens again with house wolves between that and comet players are going to start to assume that's the norm with destiny and i know we have a massive community and i love this game but i constantly want to see it improve and if we are going to have to adjust and get used to these content droughts it's going to be a negative impact i feel yeah exactly and you know, we talk about the raids being endgame content. They're not the only endgame content. And I was thinking about this while you were um, talking about the raids and everything. But the level three hundred, the level thirty guns, three hundred attack damage, like Fate Bringer, um, Vision of Confluence. Those are like arguably some of the best guns in the game. Hmm. And like, they're not going to become obsolete until like the Vanguard Strike playlists exceed level thirty. And so mm. the, currently Vanguard Rock Strikes are the highest aside from the Nightfall at level 26. Yeah. You know, with House of Wolves, we're most likely expecting, um, I think it's like Dragon or something, level 28. And yeah. then Comet comes out, you're going to have a level 30 strike with the Nightfalls and everything. Yeah. And then, you know, Nightfalls are always going to be like max level content, obviously. So I say 30 is like the Nightfall currently. But level 30 strike playlist that next DLC, when we have a level 32 strike playlist, that's when those guns become obsolete. And that's when yeah. I don't have any motivation to try and go get those guns. And just, you know, I don't want to put down my fate bringer, I'll be honest. It would break my heart to have that gun become obsolete because it's probably one of my favorite. They've said before they're going to work on it with House of Wolves. We're just going to have to wait and see what the results are. I'd definitely like to hear feedback from you guys about how PvE content can be improved. It's a hard topic because I, I think massive changes have to be made, not small gradual ones. I think some pretty big ones need to be made. But overall, I think that's a pretty good topic. Anything else to add, Diddy? Nope. It came from Twitter! It's time for the show where we read your tweets out here. Uh, you can tweet us at Destiny the Show. So many people completed this like last week's bounty. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to read some of the other tweets, though, because we had a few questions. Uh, first up, those are homeboy at Catstash Inc. Three man Crota's End flawless raider achieved. Hype, hype, hype. Congrats, dude. That's at the only B achievement oh. I have on the Xbox. Flawless raider. I just Is it? get that. Yep. <laughs> nice. Then, I'll, then that'll, that'll be my very first 100% completion on any game ever. Jeez. We need to do that then. It's gonna happen. At BTM Dreadnought, do you think more than three character slots could eventually come? I mean, it's great to have one for each class, but Diddy, what do you think? 
Eventually. We need to ditch old gen, though. That's that's it. Yeah, I don't see it happening before Destiny 2. Good idea, though. At Hagstrom's Halo, shout out to at Destiny the show for helping me get through a 10-hour drive today. Love you both. Love you, too. Hope the drive went well. At Jerry Minikowski, best VOG drop ever for once. I was the most hated person in the fire team, 400 hours into Destiny, and he got his Mythoclast in a Suros drop from VOG, so that's pretty good. I want to say one thing about that Suros. Upgrade it with the Xur first before you spend an exotic shard because it looks like a 300 attack exotic. You just need to upgrade it first. Oh, it is, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Hmm. At S. Ahmed 44, love your podcast. Just recently started listening. I love the length and the constant content. Well, thank you. We don't have a lot, lot of content to talk about. We, we do our best. At Steve Day, I just wanted to give you guys a shout out for a great podcast. Your drops always crack me up. Keep up the good work. And here we go. Everybody who completed the bounty, man. This is pretty rad. At American Gamester shows us a picture of somebody at the bottom of the board getting a Yalahorn. That's not right, is it, Diddy? <laughs> nope. It looks like he joined the game late and got four assists and then got a Yalahorn. Man. Lucky. Goodness gracious. At Ramsey99 didn't complete the bounty, but he sent us a picture of him outside the map on Earth, and he's hoping this is some of the House of Wolves area. The I can't see if it is or not. I've been to King's Watch before, and it has a similar color palette, but yeah. Cool. Thank you for sending that picture to us. At Rippin, or at Louis J, sorry, it's I just I like saying Rippin. He's our boy from Destiny Tracker. At Louis J, here's my Destiny the Show bounty. Welcome to Rumble. Time to dismantle this black chasma. <laughs> Super sweet blue reward, bro. <laughs> He's the only one in that game who got a reward, though, so. It is. He, he <laughs> felt, the, felt the love, so. Okay. Oh, Butters got a raincoat. Yeah, Butters, That's by cool. the way, if you don't know, is my puppy. He's about a year old. We got him around Christmas time. He's a hound lab pointer mix. Uh, so nice. he's super adorable, and uh, he has a raincoat and a bow tie now. We got him Ooh, a bow tie. I saw the bow tie picture. It's adorable. <laughs> it's pretty cute. At Gabriel Inachi, or Inaki. So this is a screenshot of me getting my first and only Hawkmoon in Crucible. I literally freaked out. Oh, my gosh. What a drop, dude. Do you have Hawkmoon, Diddy? No. I need to play more PlayStation to get the Hawkmoon, dude. Like, Hawkmoon is my dream gun. Is Hawkmoon exclusive to... Yes. Okay. It's a PlayStation exclusive along with Monte Carlo and the Fourth Horseman. Hawkmoon's supposed to be amazing. That's what the Destiny Tracker guy uses all the time. Yeah, Patrick. it's so good. Destiny, Planet Destiny. Not Destiny Planet Destiny. Tracker. Sorry, Tracker. <laughs> you can tell us <laughs> the end of the show, guys. At King of H, King of the H63, uh, tell your brother Saint he's super lucky because he got a purple. Is that Found Verdict? No, what is this? Is that Fellwinter's? No, that's that's Fellwinter's Fel Lie, yeah. You can get that? As a drop, wow! It looks like an Iron Banner drop because everybody has Iron Banner emblem in that. Game it mode. does. I yeah. think it probably was during that. And it's so. Saint Dragoon. That's your brother. <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. And at Adrian, bunch of numbers. My first big drop of the Crucible, and it's a Suros regime. Very nice. Very nice. Nice. So we scroll up here. Somebody tweeted us the custom exotic sparrows link, which is pretty cool. Somebody basically photoshopped different weapons onto different sparrows. So if you've got a sparrow that looks like Yalahorn, one that looks like Dragon's Breath. Thank you, Shifty25, for sending us that tweet. Going to keep scrolling up. Oh, we forgot to mention exotics can be, like, weapons can be locked or whatever in the weekly update. Yeah. Cool. That's basically it. Just yeah. so, like, people who have children or girlfriends dismantling <laughs> their exotics that's the it's, only practical explanation i've heard of it and it actually the makes old, sense it's literally the <laughs> only expo- well okay we had that big destiny story of some dude um doing the playstation share play with a stranger and he just started deleting his exotics yeah yeah so that's another <laughs> reason why they're implementing that stuff that Manny Sidhu sends us a picture of him getting a rocket launcher do you know what kind of rocket launcher that is it's the one sassy has it's got the big like nose and back on it Oh, that's truth, and that's that's not him getting it. That's not him. No, you got like I gotta look at the arrow to see where he is on the scoreboard. Did he photo? So, oh, oh, yeah, you're he's right, at you're the top right. of the leaderboard. Yeah. But the dude at the bottom of the leaderboard gets truth. Hmm, heartbreak. And the dude in the the other game at the bottom of the leaderboard get a legendary engram. Yeah, that's yep. how PVP is, bro. That's a point two nine KD. That's worthy of a legendary engram, right? <laughs> at Bilby nine three eight seven two. It took way too much PvP to finally get an awesome reward, but it's done. Bounty complete. And he ended up getting... 
dude, what is that? Patience and Time. It's Thank a you. exotic sniper rifle. And Bilby is actually pretty active on the uh, Destiny of the Show clan bungee chat. Ooh. So join Th- us over there. Thank you. I'm on my phone. I can hardly see these things. So <laughs> at Flay underscore unreal. Some guy got an exotic and a legendary, and it wasn't it's him. Meet a multi tool and uh, exotic or uh, legendary glove Ingram. Jeez, dude. Oh my gosh. So many of you completed the bounty. That's awesome. There's going to be a wall of fame on our website, and I'll feature all of these pictures in an Imgur gallery, so you can check it out at destinytheshow.com. Next week's bounty is to ride on top of any of the final strike bosses. Okay, bonus points for Sepix Prime, and take a picture of that. So you want to ride on top of them like a bull, and we want to see a picture of it. Bonus points for Sepix, and it's even better if you can actually take a picture of your friend so we can see it from a distance, because otherwise you're just going to be like looking down. We don't know if you fall on him or if you're riding him, so it'll be like scouts <laughs> on or kind of a thing. Super bonus points if you're dancing, sitting, or on your sparrow. Oh my gosh, yeah, that'd be <laughs> sweet. All right, Diddy, where can people find your content? Twitter.com slash Diddy DTS, D-I-T-T-Y DTS. And youtube.com slash whooshness, W-O-O-O-S-H-N-E-S-S. Excellent. You can follow us at Destiny the Show on Twitter. Tweet us. We like to get tweets. You can go to destinytheshow.com for all the links from today's show and more. You can follow me at BBK Dragoon or on youtube.com slash BBK Dragoon. We have a Twitch account. It's Destiny the Show, twitch.tv slash Destiny the Show, of course. Other than that, have a great week. Hopefully, I'm really hoping next week is 112. We believe it's probably going to be next Thursday, and we think House of Wolves reveal is coming soon. So thanks for hanging with us, guys. Have a great rest of your day, and we will see you next time.